Today we're joined by David Conrad of Focus Point, Terry Mullen of Arsenal Capital Partners, and Rudy Scarpa of Pantheon. Gentlemen, welcome to PrivCap today. Thanks for being here. Great. Thank Thanks. you. David, you also uh, advise first-time funds, which are obviously uh, considered to be the hardest type of uh, fundraise. What advice do you give to someone who says, I'm, I'm going to spin out or I'm going to raise my uh, a fund for the first time? What do you tell them to start doing right away? Well, if it's more than just themselves, that's a, a big help. It's a tough decision. And, and in a lot of cases, they're not really entrepreneurs and they haven't thought about it. And there's, there's a great deal of venture capital risk that you've got to evaluate starting up a new firm. A lot of these guys have never run a business before and they've never had a CFO. And there's a lot of decisions right out of the box that they haven't made. You know, finding, a, finding office space, getting an IT system, et cetera. You know, what are their core values? Do, are they going to develop a consistent culture? And, uh, you know, who, who on that management team, have they ever worked together? I'd say, David, um, I get a lot of calls from people looking to start first-time funds, because we did. Uh, and my first response is, really think hard about this, because it's going to take you twice as long and cost you twice as much money than you think it's going to take. And it is hard. Um, and people, a lot of people have these misconceptions that it's really exciting and you know, going to be fun, um, but it's a lot of hard work. Uh, that said, there are, what, five, over 5,000 private asset firms in, in the world today. They all came from somewhere, so many, many people have gone through this process, um, but it really is, it is a, a trial and elimination process, if you will. Um, best talent, best strategies, what the points of differentiation are, all those things come through uh, that very arduous process, and, you know, you learn a lot. As a GP, there's actually a lot of value. You get a lot of feedback you don't want. And if you actually go address your soft spots and your weaknesses and your biases, um, which I know we have learned a ton over 18 years doing that by continuously seeking the hard feedback and trying to continually be better, these are the things that have uh, enabled us to increase our points of differentiation in the market. It's such a crowded market. Um, you know, you have to have some differentiated strategy to just cut through all the noise. And you may have to get creative for some short period of time. If you can't get LPs to commit to a, a blind pool fund, um, you know, there's nothing wrong with, for example, doing a pledge fund, a deal by deal. I mean, the economics could be attractive. You could bring, that's a great way to start generating relationships with LPs um, and then proving the concept, proving that you can execute on the strategy that's differentiated. There really is a market there, um, starting to build a track record as an organization. Uh, and then raising a fund. It's a, it's, a, it's a great alternative. We're seeing more and more of that. There's a lot of LPs that will tell a newer firm, you know, I won't invest in funds one through three, but if you do well, I'll come back and invest in fund four. Is there a flaw in that approach? Yeah, certainly. There may not be capacity available, and you may be missing out on some very high financial returns over a long period of time. I'll tell you, for us, we started as a first-time fund, and we're incredibly grateful to the people who put us in business, and they co-invested with us, and they backed us in fund two, and three, and four. And so, um, you know, we sincerely appreciate those relationships. Uh, they are, you know, they are the critical investors and partners in our firm. And uh, each fund, we're happy to add, you know, only a handful of investors. We're not raising a lot of capital. So if that's not your objective, to max capital and at possibly the cost of returns, then we do have the luxury to be more selective and we're really looking for people who are smart, good investors. They, they backed us earlier on and then they're able to scale with us and support us as we've grown you know, modestly over time. And firms like yours, I mean, are there very large LPs like pension funds who show up to a, a, a firm with a fund four or a fund five and say, you guys have done great, here's $250 million, we'd like to be your, your, your next big investor, that's not quite feasible, is it? No, it's neither one of the, you know, the scenario is not feasible from either side, right? So uh, we don't have that much more capacity. Each fund we raise, we raise a little bit more and generally existing investors have been happy and so they want to increase their allocation. So there's a certain number of slots um, and uh, we try to be as thoughtful as we can with every slot. But again, our, our sincere appreciation and, and loyalty is to our existing investors who backed us early when we most needed them. I would reiterate that. I think um, I mean, we've had one investor for 30 years um, and, and you're, you're you know, very grateful for those investors that came in early and I would, I would say for any general partner um, and, and for LPs out there um, that are interested in a particular manager, you know, an LP might have to be a little bit less comfortable and invest in a fund earlier than they normally would to sort of get that slot, get in there, um, because you're not going to be able to scale up 
with that GP over time if you don't get that, that early slot. 